So, uh, hi, everyone. I'm a member of um, the Apache MXNet PPMC and also a senior applied scientist at uh, Amazon AI. Um, I'm really glad to be presenting at my first uh, Apache Con uh, in my favorite track about uh, MXNet. So, uh, in today's talk, I'll be uh, first sharing the state of our community. And then we'll be looking at uh, the current status in AI frameworks and uh, examine the fragmentation problem. Afterwards, I'll be introducing how uh, MXN 2.0 is um, helping to bridge the gap that's caused by the fragmentation. And finally, I'll share an update on the ecosystem of uh, MXNet if we, have, if we have time. So um, MXNet is uh, a pretty large community. We've had um, over 900 contributors um, that um, helped on MXNet. Um, we have uh, over 19K stars on GitHub and uh, almost 7,000 uh, forks. Um, since joining the Apache Incubator, uh, we've uh, progressed with um, almost 6,000 commits. And uh, it's a widely adopted uh, deep learning framework by the industry and trusted by many companies. So um, here are some uh, information how on how you can uh, stay connected uh, in uh, MXNet. So uh, as usual, you can join and subscribe to our dev list. And um, you can also connect with us on the ASF Slack um, in the MXNet channel. Um, there are also uh, good first issues that uh, we identify for people who want to get started in the project. Um, and also we label our uh, roadmap issues on, on GitHub with the, the roadmap label. Um, so at the moment, we're looking for improvement in C++ and the uh, Java bindings. And also uh, we want to integrate uh, more closely with uh, TVM Relay, uh, which uh, Tenchi talked about in, in the morning. And uh, finally, there are um, social media channels um, to which you can subscribe to our news and the announcements. Okay, so now let's dive in to uh, discuss about the AI framework fragmentation. So here's a, an AI open source landscape that um, that's produced by Linux AI Foundation. Um, so AI is really among the fastest growing field that spreads into every industry and the demand for AI talent uh, almost doubles every year since 2015. Similarly, there's an explosion in the diversity of um, AI tools that touches every aspect of um, AI and data science in data processing, analysis, and modeling. And uh, because of the high practical value and even higher potential, the industry invests a lot in the AI tooling. So um, in this picture, we may recognize um, the, the logos of many popular AI tools here. Um, while impressive, there's a, a problem in this picture. Um, it's the fragmentation in the AI open source softwares. Most notably, um, the deep learning softwares evolved to become a whole independent group from earlier machine learning tools, despite that uh, deep learning is just a new way of modeling in machine learning. So let's see why this fragmentation is a, a problem. So first, what do I mean by fragmentation? In the context of machine learning and deep learning open source software, uh, it, I'm referring to the lack of interoperability and uh, lack of common interface design. So uh, next, I'll try to convince you that this problem is really costly. So why is it costly? Um, let's take a look at its effect on three groups of people that participate in the AI open source software. So um, first to the users, the lack of interoperability and common design among frameworks creates a lock-in in two ways. First, um, it's the learning curve. So um, the user needs to choose a tool to learn um, and uh, that learning takes time. Um, when the user needs to switch uh, from one framework to another, the, the user would have to relearn. So the time cost is locked into the, the tool of choice. 
The second um, part is that um, whatever user code base uh, the user creates, it's locked in that tool of choice too. That's um, because of lack of common interface design, the code cannot be transferred to another framework without being migrated to it manually. So this lock-in makes it hard to benefit from the strengths of different frameworks. Second, to the framework developers, the lack of interoperability creates the need to develop and maintain independent stacks in each of the framework. So um, because of uh, the lack of interoperability, the frameworks are essentially competing with each other. And um, the user would have to choose among um, the many choices for just one of them. So this would force the developers and contributor resources to be focused on um, the shortest plank, so to speak, uh, in this uh, barrel of um, framework, instead of uh, focusing on making the needed progress for the field. So um, the third party developers would be developing hardware and runtime or other third party extensions for, for example, distributed training. Um, they must invest in each of the framework in integration. And this results in duplicated investments and uh, higher engineering costs. So this would become a barrier for innovation um, and hinders progress because of the, the higher cost. And often framework agnostic extensions would suffer from maintainability issues as a result of managing complex dependencies. So how did um, the frame fragmentation happen in the first place? It comes down to the different design choices in uh, the, the framework's um, goals. And um, uh, so part of the, um, so, Deep learning frameworks would usually uh, focus on the array interface, whereas uh, in addition to array, machine learning frameworks also provides data frames, such as um, in the, the Spark project. Um, and um, uh, machine learning frameworks often value higher precision, whereas um, in deep learning, um, the precision is less of an issue, uh, but um, we focus more on speed. So um, the uh, that's why deep learning frameworks usually provide half precision um, choices. So, um, in also in machine learning uh, frameworks, they would optimize for Scala programs, which is not usually a focus of deep learning frameworks. And um, uh, also, deep learning frameworks provide automatic differentiation, whereas uh, machine learning frameworks usually don't. Um, also, um, most of the time, machine learning frameworks uh, follows the imperative program paradigm, whereas uh, deep learning now provides both imperative and symbolic um, optimization uh, as, uh, as paradigms. Um, and uh, acceleration is more of a, a focus uh, for deep learning on, on GPUs and the accelerators nowadays. Um, so um, I'll be focusing on the um, array uh, API, the automatic differentiation, and the acceleration uh, so that I can show you the key ing ingredients of uh, deep learning frameworks. So first on the array API, um, the modern array library is uh, uh, popularized by NumPy starting uh, 15 years ago. It's a combination of uh, data structure as well as um, the manipulation methods. Uh, the data structure captures the data, the data type, the shape, and also in um, different layouts, we would uh, describe them as strides. And um, there's also um, ways of um, indexing the array to create a view and copy. And uh, the, there is also vectorized as arithmetics, uh, broadcasting, as well as reduction by certain axes. So for those who are already familiar with um, NumPy, uh, related programs, this example should look familiar. So um, now that we talked about array, let's talk about um, automatic differentiation. Um, first, I'd like to share a quote from uh, the 2018 Turing Awards laureate, uh, Yang Lekun. Um, so he's saying, people are now building a new kind of software by assembling networks of parameterized functional blocks 
and by training them from examples using some form of gradient-based optimization. So what he's referring to is uh, differentiable programming, or sometime, some people call it um, uh, software 2.0. Um, this is enabled by automatic differentiation. So uh, what is uh, AD? Um, so in the old way of programming, um, I, I believe everyone is uh, familiar with that, and we, we all do plenty of it. Um, so uh, here, the programmers would hard code the function with the goal of generating desirable output given the input data. Um, in the differentiable programming, um, however, uh, we would be talking about uh, programming with data. So now suppose we want to have a computer tell whether an image depicts a, a cat or a dog. Um, so more or more generally, uh, it's uh, given some input data, we want to estimate the output. Um, so often the logic would be quite complicated. Uh, it might be vague, um, but uh, we have plenty of examples. Um, on the other hand, uh, as a programmer, it's almost impossible to write code uh, but we can train uh, an estimator to do that. So in order to do it, uh, we feed the image data of the kitty into a network that is uh, parameterized by the weights. And uh, the network uh, would generate a prediction through a weighted sum of um, the input data uh, and a series of um, mass operations. It produces a, a score of probability that uh, the image represents a cat or that of a dog. Um, so what automatic differentiation enables is that um, um, there, there would be an easy way of describing the differentiable function as the dense network, um, and uh, a, an easy way of uh, producing uh, the prediction from it. So since the program already knows everything about the function, once we know the arrow signal from the output end label, we can generate the, the arrow signal um, and the, the gradients in which um, the weights should be adjusted so that uh, it could produce a higher score for, for cat in this case. So um, now that we looked at um, array library and the automatic differentiation, let's also look at um, acceleration on modern hardware. So uh, the driving factors behind this need are, are really uh, the three parts. We want uh, larger networks, uh, the function f. We want to train on more data. And uh, we want to iterate faster so that uh, scientists' time can be better utilized for science and uh, not for sword fights on office chairs. Um, so first on, on larger models, um, here I'm sharing a plot uh, for the amount of compute of um, well-known deep learning models. Um, you may recognize some of the recent feats in deep learning, such as AlphaGo and neural, neural machine translation. So the pl plot x-axis is uh, a timeline, and uh, the y-axis is uh, the logarithmic plot of um, uh, uh, the unit that represents compute. It's the petaflops per second times the number of days. Um, so you can see a linear growth in this plot. And because if it's a logarithmic plot, we know that it's it's been growing exponentially since um, the 2012 deep learning boom. Um, and uh, on more data. So let's take a look at uh, the amount of data human generates uh, every minute. So this is uh, Domo's uh, data never sleeps infographics. Um, you can see from on the left, that uh, the internet population has grown from 3 billion in 2014 to 4.57 billion in 2020. And uh, every minute, there is a deluge of data that's uh, generated across all the different apps and services on the right. For example, for YouTube on the um, top right corner, um, there is uh, 20 days worth of video generated every minute. And uh, on bottom left, there is uh, Amazon where uh, over 6,000 packages are shipped. So nowadays, assume that um, uh, many of those are probably toilet papers. Um, so um, given the, the need for a larger model and um, uh, more data, uh, processing more data, the hardware is also innovating very fast. So 
Uh, on the left, it's a plot for the compute power of GPUs, uh, the top of the line GPUs over the years. Um, the GPU performance has increased ninefold since 2016. And on the right, it's a comparison of the two most recent generations of TPU from Google. Um, so on average, across these different uh, models, they uh, improve in performance by uh, 2.7 times. So deep learning frameworks need to not only keep up with the fast pace in every aspect, but also to lead the future. Um, so now that what we talked about the fragmentation, where it came from, uh, let's talk about um, the solution to it. Here, I introduced two standardization efforts in machine learning and deep learning that I'm, all, I'm really honored to participate in. Um, so the first one is uh, Python Data API Consortium. The goal of the consortium is to standard, standardize array and data frame API to address the fragmentation um, of libraries that offer them. Uh, we assemble a consortium of people from interested companies and key community contributors to examine the design choices in, uh, in them and uh, to propose the standards that are suitable for modern day tools. Um, the proposed standards are shared to the public as a request for comments or RFCs that uh, library maintainers can provide feedback early on um, and adopt afterwards. And the community participates in the reviews throughout this process. Um, the other effort is um, uh, Open Neural Network Exchange, or ONIX. Um, so ONIX is uh, uh, an effort that was started by Facebook and uh, Microsoft. Uh, it facilitates the exchange of deep learning models. And it, it does so by providing a definition of extensible computation graph model, um, as well as definitions of built-in operators and standard data types. So um, now let's move on to talk about MXNet. Um, we've um, covered what, what the fragmentation problem is, uh, as well as the, the needs in deep learning. So uh, we're prepared for this. So um, MXNet is a, a truly open source deep learning framework developed in the Apache way. Uh, it's a community of deep learning enthusiasts with the goal of democratizing AI and making sure that it's accessible to everyone. Uh, it's designed to be flexible and efficient and ready for production. Um, also, um, as I described before, there, uh, there are the two standards that are both adopted by uh, MXNet. So um, in 2.0, we aim to provide the bridge between NumPy-based machine learning tools uh, and deep learning. And the two most notable features are the NumPy-compatible programming as well as the Gluon 2.0. Um, the NumPy-compatible programming uh, provides the MP module which is a NumPy compatible uh, array library with the enhancement of um, auto differentiation and GPU acceleration. Um, we also provide NPX, which is the neural network extension to the NumPy compatible array API. Um, for Gluon 2.0, uh, we provide uh, a simple high level programming model um, that can optimize NumPy enhanced deep learning. Overall, the goal is to make deep learning and machine learning fast and also flexible. So here's an example of such combination. Um, we write the neural network from the cat and dog example in just a few lines of code. So um, overall, the, the class structure is uh, what it's like uh, for programming in uh, Gluon 2.0. We can declare parameters for, for weights and biases for that linear combination. Um, and um, in the forward function, we define the compute where um, we can use the NumPy interface for um, the uh, arithmetic uh, operations. And uh, we also can use the neural network extension to, to NumPy, for example, for the softmax activation. So once we have the, the network, uh, we can create uh, an instance of that and feed the um, data of um, a kitty through it. 
So um, in Gluon, there is the concept called hybridization, which is uh, our just-in-time compilation. Uh, it can optimize and uh, export uh, NumPy and uh, neural network models to different bindings uh, of um, programming languages. And we can also deploy them through TVM, TensorRT, or move it for, to uh, OpenVINO. Um, and also we, we can exchange the model with um, even wider range of tools through uh, Onyx. And once the Python Data API Consortium standard um, is uh, widely adopted, uh, it will be able to interoperate uh, with uh, even more tools that are participating. Um, so this makes uh, MXNet really portable. And uh, in 2.0, we also make it easier to customize, which is an important need in the industry. Here, I would focus on the first two items of um, custom operators. So for uh, C++ operators, we used to require that um, these operators are written with our interface, and uh, it needs to be compiled and linked um, to MXNet directly. So this creates a need for maintaining a fork if anyone wants to add custom operations. So uh, in order to make it flexible, we now offer a custom operator uh, library that can be loaded at runtime, that can be registered into our uh, operator registry in an ABI compatible way. So um, this removes the need to maintain the fork. Um, also, we now support defining operators using TVM. Uh, which Tenchi talked about um, in uh, this morning. So here I have a comparison of the same operator that's written with TVM in Python, and also the hand-optimized operator that's written in C++. So um, uh, as you can see, in, in terms of the length, uh, it really improves the development efficiency. Um, and also TVM offers many ways of um, automatically optimizing for um, this compute, which makes it uh, really desirable for um, development. Um, so in 2.0, we also enhanced uh, a lot in, in terms of uh, performance, as well as uh, adding more hardware support. So um, we now support CUDA graph for scheduling so that uh, it removes uh, one of the, the largest overhead um, in, in scheduling from the deep learning framework. Um, we also support uh, runtime compilation with NVRTC, which enables the runtime fusion of GPU operators. Um, so this would improve the speed as well as um, reduce the, the memory consumption. We also enhanced our dynamic graph execution so that um, uh, graphs with a combination of uh, static and dynamic parts it would be optimized um, as much as possible. Um, so for the, the static part, it would be optimized in the exact same way as um, a static network. And uh, finally, we enable automatic mixed precision, um, which is uh, automatically switching to uh, FP16 for tensor core compute. So this would improve the speed. And uh, since we offer it in the NumPy compatible API, it can be used for, for NumPy as well. So here I share some of the performance highlights of um, MXNet. Um, so MXNet, uh, uh, here I, I'm sharing the uh, highlights from MLPerf 0.7, which is released recently. Um, it's a, a standard benchmark in deep learning with very strict competition rules. MXNet is used in 23 of uh, the 52 available on-premise submissions. So um, for two of the tasks that are well known, um, here uh, for image classification on ImageNet with ResNet 50, um, NVIDIA submitted a, a record breaking um, submission, which is uh, 46 seconds with um, uh, 1,840 uh, A100 GPUs. So that's a lot of GPUs. Um, and uh, there's also a pretty good result from um, Intel uh, CPU, where um, the, the speed record was uh, a little over 18 minutes uh, with just eight machines. And um, uh, on object detection on MS Coco uh, with SSD, the speed record was uh, 49 seconds with uh, 1,024 A100 GPUs. 
So uh, we also now integrate with uh, one DNN, which um, was called MKL DNN before. Um, so it helped a lot on the CPU performance. So here I'm sharing a, a bar chart for different models uh, on the relative speed up of uh, one DNN version versus the uh, native uh, version that we had before. So overall, we can see that um, it achieves an over five times uh, improvement across the board. And uh, for a mobile net, it achieved even uh, higher speed up for over 40 times. Um, so this really is um, um, attributed to the optimization in uh, 1DNN for AVX 512 uh, optimization. So um, let's also talk about the low cost, which is uh, important in machine learning. So I'm sharing a Gluon LP BERT real-time inference uh, result. Uh, the blog was posted uh, just yesterday. So um, the model is BERT, which is uh, the bidirectional embedding from transformers. Uh, it's uh, one of the state-of-the-art um, transformer-based models um, that first broke the, the human record for uh, natural language understanding task. So um, I'm sharing, uh, I'm going to share the results on the sentiment analysis task, uh, which is showing the upper right corner. So suppose that uh, we're looking at a, a book review comment, which is uh, saying that it's great for insomniacs. So uh, this is not something that uh, uh, we would look for in the quality of a book, uh, but uh, you, even though it uh, says it's great. Um, so it's a hard task. So uh, for the inference cost, here I'm showing a, a bar chart for um, the, the BERT uh, sentiment classification task uh, for different sequence lengths. And um, each bar of different color represents uh, the um, cost in dollars per 1 million requests on four different types of um, uh, hardware instances, uh, EC2. So um, as we can see for the G4DN X large with the half precision uh, inference, we can achieve um, a million requests for just 20 cents, uh, which is um, you know, a pretty uh, nice cost reduction over the, the previous results. Um, in comparison, some of the publicly available NLP services, such as uh, Hugging Face, offers the uh, same amount of inference at a monthly cost of uh, $200. So a thousand times. Um, <clears throat> looks like I, I still have some time. So last but not least, let me introduce the ecosystem and uh, uh, the different projects that support uh, MXNet. Uh, first one is AutoGluon. So AutoGluon is an AutoML tool that enables automatic machine learning with just uh, three lines of code. It uh, automatically ensembles various models and uh, it performs hyperparameter optimization to pick the best combination of models at hand, uh, for the task at hand. As shown in the table, so in a comparison uh, to other AutoML tools on 11 uh, Kaggle competitions, Autogluon performed the best on seven of them uh, with the least amount of time. Um, the other project I'd like to share is that uh, it's uh, Dive Into Deep Learning. It's a deep learning book with the perfect combination of um, knowledge as well as uh, hands-on practice. Um, so it's written as Jupyter Notebooks to help build um, the hands-on skills and the solid foundation in deep learning. Um, and uh, it also offers uh, a very active community of learners that help each other to create the best learning experience. Um, Jason Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA, also highly recommends it. Um, it's also used in more than 100 universities worldwide um, as uh, textbooks for teaching deep learning and machine learning. And, and uh, half of the top 30 universities use D2L. Um, in computer vision, uh, we have Gluon CV, which is uh, a versatile deep learning for computer vision toolkit that provides training and deployment for a wide range of tasks. Uh, they include image classification, detection, segmentation on the right, uh, action recognition, and uh, post estimation uh, on videos. 
So more recently, um, it um, uh, also offers the depth estimation as well as uh, generative adversarial networks for various image generation tasks. So all these faces are, are fake. Um, another great computer vision toolkit I'd like to highlight is Insight Face. It's a um, deep learning toolkit for face analysis. It provides implementations and the pre-trained state-of-the-art models. Um, the two killer features are the arc face model for face recognition and uh, the award-winning ret retina face model for face localization. So Insight Face is a famous and uh, widely used toolkit in both academia and industry. It aims to become the, the center for innovation in uh, deep face analysis. Now, moving on to NLP, uh, we have Glow NLP, which provides training and deployment for a wide variety of natural language tasks, uh, such as sentiment analysis, uh, natural language inference, uh, text generation, translation, uh, and sequence labeling. Uh, it offers over a thousand pre-trained models, and um, as I shared before, it offers the low-cost inference too. In the next major version of Glow NLP, we provide a NumPy-based implementation and also more backbone networks and uh, data processing tools for faster uh, iteration. So Glow NLP focuses on the industry and powers many of the uh, NLP services in AWS, as well as in Alexa's uh, natural language understanding. Um, another great uh, NLP toolkit is uh, Sokai. Um, it's a sequence-to-sequence -sequence toolkit that uh, specializes in translation. Uh, it provides uh, state-of-the-art translation models and powers uh, the Amazon Translate service. Uh, in the latest version, it adopts Gluon API that uh, achieved 14% increased training speed with uh, one quarter less lines of code. It offers uh, faster model training now with inter uh, integration of uh, AMP and uh, Harvard. It also achieves uh, 3.4 times faster translation with uh, quantized matrix multiplication. Um, Gluon TS is a deep learning for time series toolkit that powers Amazon Forecast. Um, it's designed to be modular and scalable with the production stability. You can mix different modules of um, distributions, uh, probabilistic components, and the neural network structures for different approaches in uh, time series modeling. And uh, uh, next is uh, DGL. This is more of a cutting edge um, research topic. So Deep Graph Library, or DGL, is a flexible graph neural network toolkit. It's widely adopted in the research community and has high performance. It also offers domain-specific tools for knowledge graph embedding and life science in chemistry and uh, biology. Um, yeah, again, so th that's the end of uh, my, my talk. Again, uh, if you want to get involved in uh, MXNet, here are the different channels uh, that uh, you can connect with us and uh, uh, reach out to us. All right, with that, um, I'll uh, switch back from the uh, full screen so that I can see the questions. Thank you. So. All right, so uh, I saw a question from Quok. Um, so um, you mean with MXNet, we can build a deep learning model and then export the trained model for mobile apps? Yes, that's the case. And um, uh, since we integrate with TVM, um, TVM can actually optimize for the different hardwares for uh, that mobile so that you can get, get the performance benefits from it too. Yeah, any other question? Also, uh, remember to check out the DJL library uh, talk uh, from tomorrow. So Chin, a colleague of mine, and also a PPMC member of MXNet will be talking about deep learning in Java extensively tomorrow. Uh, 
Um, can you say something ab more about the new 2.0 versions? What are the changes? So the two most notable changes are um, the NumPy compatible API for programming. Um, this would um, enable uh, NumPy models to be uh, optimized and deployed in a similar way as uh, deep learning models from uh, MXNet in 1.x. And also in 2.0, we simplified our Gluon interface so that um, um, it's more flexible. Um, yeah, it's more flexible and um, can uh, optimize different models um, so that uh, we can uh, help the in speed of innovation. Um, any other question? Um, so uh, 2.0 release date. Um, we're going through a series of um, uh, beta releases for 2.0 first. Um, we want to make sure that it's of uh, a good quality uh, before we call it an official release. So we don't have a, a date set in stone, but we do have a quality bar in mind. Uh, the first beta release would be happening in the, the following months. All right, thank you.